I wasn't able to um, move a piece of machinery in here this morning that I wanted to move in. And I know many of you have them. I don't know if you have them in your house and they're using them for coat hangers or shirt hangers or whatever, but it's called a treadmill. <laughs> and many of us have been on treadmills. And, you know, we normally start out, they say start out slow. Then you got the little buttons there. And then you got the key here that in case something would happen, you can take that key out and it will stop. But you know what? Sometimes that treadmill really gets them moving, I tell you what. And then we think we can do more and more, so we get that baby, well, we got to get that bluff. We got to get that thing really, really cranking. And I mean, we are really moving! <laughs> Heather said, you won't be able to talk after you do that. <laughs> Sometimes life, don't you feel like you're on a treadmill and just can't get off? Just can't get off. Now, many people have, act, have had accidents on treadmills where, you know, maybe they did. And when you fall off of it, pew, it just spits you clear out across the room. But how many times do we think that we're on this treadmill? I'm getting my breath. Somebody have a testimony while well, I do? <laughs> How often we think life is just that way. We have got ourselves moving at a certain pace. Now, before I continue, I understand I'm talking to some senior adults, and your life might be the best it's been in years regarding your schedule. Maybe you're not as busy as you used to be. You might got any water? Do we have water around here anywhere? I'm going to talk to you this morning about what really matters and how often, how often we get so too busy. We get so too busy, probably not good English, but we get so too busy, but for not the things that really, really matter. So today, I'm going to talk to you about that. No doubt you feel, some feel overwhelmed. I talk to people all the time. They say, I feel rushed. I feel overwhelmed. Thank you. Is that what's left from yours? No, it's fresh. <laughs> Linda, you're so cute. Thank you. That was mean, wasn't it? I've been there. Of all messages, as I prefaced last week, talking along, along this subject is something that has been new for me, and it's been something that God has been working over me over regarding. You know, I used to talk about the thing, well, you know, I, I can't take a day off. The devil doesn't take a day off. We can slow down and rest when we get to heaven. Have you heard those terms before? So ridiculous. I mean, come on. It's so ridiculous. But it's very, very possible this morning, I have a phrase I want to reiterate, and I will be throughout this message. The greatest enemy, the greatest enemy to your life and to the life that you want, it may be the life that you're presently living. It could be. It's very, very possible. It could be the very, very life that you are presently living. The greatest enemy to the life, to the life, to your heart, that, that, the one that you want. I hear it all the time. I hear it all the time. I've heard it all through my ministry. Oh, Pastor Rich, I just can't wait till I can slow down. I just can't wait till I can slow down. I just can't wait till I have less irons in the fire. I just can't wait till I can only work one job and not six. You know, and I've heard all of those, all of those, all of those testimonies all through my ministry. And as I think about that, I think, wow, Lord Jesus, will you just help me for the next 15 or 20 minutes just to help our people, help us all, help us all to really, really understand that we don't have to be rushed and we don't have to have everything just all jammed up 
and many, many times, even in the middle of the rush, we're just so disappointed. Even though we're rushing and we're rushing and we're just disappointed and, you know, the faster we work, it doesn't get any better and we continue to be disappointed. So you know what? When you're really too busy for what matters most is what we want to talk about today. And as we look at this, there's a powerful, powerful scripture that um, I'm going to give you here after a bit. But I'm thinking maybe possibly before I go there, it could be that there's somebody this morning that says, you know what? I feel like I'm, a, I'm maybe a little bit dysfunctional. Maybe you're saying, you know what? I'm just, I'm just, you know, I've got places to go. I've got people to do. i got jobs to do. i got bills to pay. i got a kitchen to clean. i got kids to raise. i got news to read, the good and the bad, mostly the bad. i got a yard to mow. i got clothes to buy. i got clothes to wash. i got clothes to buy so I can wash more clothes. Then I'll buy some more. Then I'll wash some more clothes. Got to take some pictures i got to write some things down, and i got to be on social media at least six hours a day or my day's not complete. Oh, boy, that's an exaggeration. Okay. But just what if the biggest enemy to your life is the life that you're living right now, the life that you're living right now? I think of the, the ministry of Jesus Christ. We see here that we talked about it last week about the way that he lived in the Gospels, and we're thinking about the minister that he had. He only had three years of ministry. And the things that he accomplished in that three, three years of ministry was amazing. I mean, he trained these 12 guys that didn't have a clue what was going on. He trained them for kingdom values, and, and he endured the hatred of the Pharisees, and, and, uh, and he resisted, resisted the temptations, and he healed all sorts of people that were sick, and he loved all sorts of people that were hurting and he preached the word fearlessly. And uh, I, think the, I, I think I read that he fulfilled 351 Old Testament prophecies. And think about this. This is amazing, amazing. Jesus, I don't see anywhere in the scripture where it says, and he ran from place to place. He ran from place to place. I don't see where it says he was so busy. I don't read that in the scripture, okay. I don't see where it says he was so rushed and he didn't quite accomplish the Father's mission. I don't think that's anywhere in the scripture, okay? Now, we hear people say, I got to run over there, okay? Then you heard people say, would it be better if you drove your car, right? Instead of running. So, but we just like to say that, you know, I got I to gotta scoot in, I got to scoot out, I got to hit that, I got to get there, and I got to go... That's almost like a lifestyle that we're just living. And we just, it's almost like, if we don't say it that way, it's almost like, are they just lazy? Do, do they not do anything? So we kind of kind of maybe impress ourselves and other people too by saying, well, I just gotta, I just gotta hit that. You know, I got 14 more things on my schedule today, but I think I can get 13 of them done. If I don't get the last one done, I can do that one tomorrow. Jesus never ran anywhere, anywhere. In the scripture that we have in Mark chapter, chapter two, I'm reading this scripture for a couple of reasons, but the first reason we see it as we begin to read the very opening words. As he, Jesus, as he what? As he what? What did he do? As he walked along. He saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. He just said, follow me, Jesus told him. And Levi got up and followed him. I think if Levi would have followed a rush Jesus, I think Levi would have probably lived a rushed life. But we know that Jesus wasn't rushed. So therefore, I think that Levi was able to understand the lifestyle that Jesus was living. And when he says, come and follow me, can't you just almost hear Jesus whispering that to us today? Hey, come on. It's not like, oh, come follow me. Then we go, okay, I'm in a hurry. I'll hurry and get there. No, Jesus said, come and follow me. It seems soothing. It sounds soothing. And the good news is, it's amazing. Following Jesus is amazing. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Now, last week, 
we read this next scripture, and we read it in the NIV. And I want you to give me permission to do it in the message. And the message is not a translation. The message is more of a devotional type reading that um, Peterson came out with several years ago. And I like reading the message along with my other uh, scriptures from either the NIV or the New King James or whatever. So we read this message last week, this scripture last week. Let's read it again in the message, and then we're going to kind of get through this, okay? Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me, and you'll recover your life. Isn't that a nice little phrase? Get away, get away with me and you'll recover your life. And that is so true. It's so true. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. I like this next phrase. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Somebody's phone's going off. If you can't hear it, I do. There we go. Got it? Okay. Have you ever heard people, or you've been around people, and after you leave, you say, Boy, I know you were part of this conversation that we had, but man, that was heavy, wasn't it? Do you have heavy conversations? And I'm not saying we just need to live life flippantly and, 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 and without being serious or whatever, but you know what? This scripture is so powerful, and the reason it's powerful is because Jesus is included in our life as we're living our life. So therefore, it can be this way with him. It's probably not going to be this way without him. So therefore, we have this powerful, powerful scripture right here in Matthew, and I like the way Peterson talks about it. Jesus said, just get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I like that. Okay, walk with me. Watch how I live. Don't just believe. Don't just believe what I believe, but live also the way that I live. The 33 years that Jesus was here on earth, and wow, it's almost like, did he waste 30 years before he actually, you know, started in here? And then during, the, the, during his, 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 his ministry, he, he even spends 40 days alone with God. And then, and, and, and then you know, he, he, he goes to a wedding Okay, goes to a wedding, and he was one of the last ones to leave. Because I, I'm going to guess because uh, you know they 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 turn water into wine, whatever. So there's a lot going on with, with with the life of Jesus, and the point that we get as we look through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the lifestyle of Jesus. We have to conclude it was not rushed. It was not rushed. It was not running. It was different than that. It's different than that. So, if Jesus wasn't rushed, and if Jesus wasn't, wasn't running, why are we? What are we running from, and what are we running to? What are we running from, and what are we running to? Because if you're here, and you're running here, you're running from something. And if you haven't got there yet, you're running to something. So the question is, what are we running from and what are we running to? You say, Pastor, I'm not running from anything. I'm just trying to live my life. I'm just trying to keep my sanity. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to keep my head above water. Did you know the life of Jesus Christ with us? It can be better than that. It can be better than us just, just keeping our head above water, just keeping our chin up, just, just keeping afloat. I think the abundant life that we have in Christ is much, much better more than that. Some people are running from their past. Some people are running from their failures, their insecurities, their hurts, their abuse. And maybe they're running to get married. Maybe they're running into a, for a new relationship. Maybe they're running for success or money or, or whatever 
their hobbies are. So they're running from something, we're running to something. But you know what? When we chase the things of life, we're left empty. When we're just chasing the things of life, we're left empty. The scripture says, be careful because he says, you can gain the whole world and lose your soul. And I've talked to some people, and here's basically the conclusion of their life. They sold their soul for that career, or they sold their soul for that relationship, or they sold their soul for that advancement, for that success that they think they're going to be chasing after. Now, the good news is this. We can be happy. We can be, we can be full of life. We can be full of fulfilling those things that we know we have to fulfill. And I don't want anybody to walk out of her today and say, oh, yeah, well, Pastor Rich is saying we don't have to do anything in life except love Jesus and, and serve him. Well, you know, then you would be like the one guy said, you know, you would be so heavenly minded, you'd be of no earthly good. And we don't need that going on. Okay, so there has to be, there has to be, there has to be an answer. Okay. If we follow an unrushed Jesus, got a couple more blanks to fill in, okay? And I know you love the blanks. If we will follow an unrushed, and he wasn't rushed, okay, if we follow him, we should be living an unrushed life. Now, had you talked to people and been around people that they amaze you because how organized they are, and they get so much done, you say, how in the world do they do that? Good land. Did you hear all that they got done today? And they don't even look like they're wore out. Now, I know a few people like that. They're so organized, and they're so good. And you know what? And I'm going to say there is something to that. Organized people get a lot more things done than those that are not organized because those that aren't organized, they run from this and run to that and go back to that and whatever. You know, and sometimes we, you know, hello? I didn't, then I've been running, have you heard this? I've been running around all day and I can't see a thing I got done. Have you ever heard that one? Maybe it's because you've been running around all day. Okay, so therefore... Therefore, I'm thinking this. If we follow an unrushed rush, rush Jesus, we will, we will also we will live that kind of a life that is not rushed. I have another quote for you before I close this out down here at the end. The solution is not more time, folks. If we get nothing else, let's say you can't remember all this, and it's not a lot to remember, but I hope you can remember this, this one here, okay? If you say, I can only remember one, Tear the other two up and keep this one. Put this on your fridge, okay? The solution is not more time. The solution is more of what matters most. That's the solution. You've heard me say it before. Good land. Some of you, you've heard me preach so many times, and I know I repeat myself, but, you know, sometimes we still haven't got it. And the reason i got to repeat it because maybe I didn't get it either. Okay. You've heard me say this before. We do what we want to do. We do what we want to do. And the illustrations I give along that line is this. Okay, let's say we all have our jobs, we all work, and we all have all these things that we've got going on in our life. Boom, boom, boom. Right now, if you look at your daytime or whatever, you're, you're feeling, oh boy, yeah, my, my week's full. There's yeah, no open days. Every day, every evening's full. Okay, all right. If every evening, every day is full, I'm going to say something here, okay? And if there's an accident, God forbid, but if there's an accident, and a certain person that is a part of your life gets terribly hurt, okay? All this schedule that you have, something's going to go. Something's going to go on that schedule because you, you are going to cut something out in order to accommodate that hurting friend or loved one. Everybody shake your head yes. Okay. <clears throat> if there's a wedding, <clears throat> some people love weddings. I don't know very many of them. <laughs> I'm serious. And it's not just because I've got white hair. 
Even the people that I've married don't like the wedding. They wish it was not there. They wish, I mean, they wish, you know. And I, I try to talk to them, and, hey, come, come into my office. Come, come here, come to my office. We can do it right here. Twelve minutes, we're done. <laughs> Maybe eight. All the money is saved. Oh, wow. Boy, where am I going with that? That was not even a part of my notes. Uh, but if there's a wedding, Rhonda, Rhonda's got one this coming weekend. Her and Keith, uh, Trent's getting married over in Worcester. And you know what? As busy as Keith and Rhonda are, and they're busy people, they're busy people, they're going to be at the wedding. What did they do? They cut other stuff out of their life in order to be there. So I can honestly say, we do what we want to do. And some of you will argue that because you don't want me to be right. You know, I, I, I have to do it. I, no, you don't understand. I have, if I don't do that, you know, I lose my car. I lose my house. I understand. Bottom line, we still do what we want to do. So it's not that we need more time. If there was more time, it wouldn't be any different if the lifestyle hasn't changed. It's just like I can give you a hundred bucks and say, this is all you're going to get today. You say, what, hundred bucks? Wow. Then you're going to spend it. If I give you 200, you're, wow, boy, I can, what is it? We spend what we make normally. Some people are wiser than that and they save a little bit. And I think the best, the best way, one of the, to start out with, make all you can, save all you can and give all you can. This is not my notes either. And also, this is also free, live on 80%, give your tithe, which is 10, and save 10. Now, that was free. You won't find that any place else today that you go. Nobody will give you that good information. But what am I saying? It's not that we need more time. We need to do what matters most. And this gets convictional. This gets, it should get conviction, convictional to us. We should get convicted because of this statement. Are we doing what matters most? The good news is, it's not that we're doing all the bad, wrong, wrong things and all the things that we're doing are bad, but are we doing what matters most? Even this, maybe down the road, the things that you're doing now that don't matter the most, maybe down the road you can do those because it'll be better timing to do those then. It's just, it just a little bit of science to this, along with the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. I'm believing within my heart that the solution is not more time, but the solution is more of what matters most. I believe that's where we need to be. Here's a prayer that I came across this last couple weeks ago and whatever. It's powerful. It's powerful. I want you to join me and pray this prayer for the next seven days. For the next seven days. God, help me walk slowly enough to experience Jesus fully. Help me to walk slowly enough to experience Jesus fully. We're not experiencing him fully if we're running all the time. And love people deeply. I want us to pray that prayer for the next seven days. For the next seven days. It's right there in your sermon section. If you can't remember it, just put it in your phone or tape it to your dashboard on your car or your truck. And I think the conclusion would be this. Number one, be present in the moment. Be present in the moment. And I think one of the best illustrations I can give for this is this. And again, I hate to even do it. But... I'm talking to Dirk here, and, and, and we're, in a, we're in a big conversation, and oh, I get a text. So, yeah, Dirk, go ahead. I'm listening to you. I'm listening to you. Fo listen, I'm sure we've all done it. Let me just say this. I'm sure it's not the best thing to do, okay? I know you're not little third, third graders, and I'm your ugly, ugly teacher up here, but listen to me. Right now, me talking to Dirk is the most important. This text can wait. Now, 
if I happen to see it and it says flash flood, well, first of all, if it's an emergency, somebody's going to call me. First thing, just text me. I might miss the text. This right here is way more important than this right here in that moment. Do you agree with me? Yeah. And even if you don't, I'm right, okay? <laughs> Fact. Be present in the moment. Give me a break. Just do it, okay? Boy, that was pretty strong. Okay. Choose what's important and eliminate what's not. Just choose what's important, eliminate what's not. Put it on the back burner. I had three or four projects to do yesterday. I thought I had to do, and I, and I kind of laid myself out with a little list. I backed my trailer up a little bit too close. I mean, it was only two inches too close, and I hit the gutter in front of my garage. Just backed up and just, I heard a crackle, and I thought I ran over something, and I pulled up, and it cracked again, and I looked up, and I just, you know. So I want to replace that gutter because it's damaged. It's about a 16, 18 foot piece of gutter. But of all the things I did yesterday, I told myself, I can do that. I've got the gutter. I know how to do it. I've got all the, all the materials. But you know what? That's not most important today. So I let it go. And I felt good about it. I'm going to pull in the driveway when I get home. I'm going to see it's messed up. But you know what? I'm okay with that. Because <laughs> I'm going to go to Toledo and see Lee Cronister in the hospital. What am I saying? Oh, Lee, I can't come. I, I, Mary, I can't go see Lee. I've got to fix my gutter. I've got to fix my gutter. It's been leaking. Give me a break. Again, number three. This is powerful right here. Sense God's presence and recognize his voice. I'm done. Sense God's presence and recognize his voice. And you know what? If we stop running and stop going so fast and get the stuff out of our life that's not all that important, this will work. This right here can happen. It will happen, and it should happen. And when it happens, we are better because of it.